seated next to Mayor Bill de Blasio in the Blue Room at City Hall on Thursday, the retiring school's chancellor, Carmen Farina, 74, offered her own summation of her tenure as the leader of what is in effect a medium-sized city, populated by 1.1 million students and 75,000 teachers, and with a $30 billion annual budget this is about stories. It's not about the statistics, she said. Dot that might have been her mantra in running the schools, a task to which she brought her instincts as a lifelong educator. If under Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg the education department was data-driven, willing to close schools and push back against the teachers' union while upending old ways, under Ms. Farina, the expertise and wisdom of teachers was elevated said Aaron Pallas, the chairman of the Department of Education Policy at Columbia University's Teachers College. At the announcement, both Mayor de Blasio and Ms. Farina were vague on exactly when she would be stepping down and if she would stay until a new chancellor was named. The biggest unanswered question, of course, was who would replace her. Even before the announcement, the city had been conducting a quiet national search for a successor, the mayor acknowledged on Thursday. We've been working on this for several months already, he said. But one of the challenges in choosing a successor is that many people believe Mr. de Blasio has never articulated an overarching vision for the city's schools, beyond the idea of equity and excellence for all which has done things like add computer science and advanced placement classes across the city. Mr. de Blasio made it clear on Thursday that he wants someone to continue the agenda he and Ms. Farina started together, not take the department in a whole new direction. According to two people who had been informed about the administration's efforts, who spoke anonymously because they were discussing private conversations, the names that have been floated include Jamie Aquino, the chief program officer for New Leaders for New Schools, a nonprofit that focuses on recruiting and training. Principals, Paymon Ruhanifard, the superintendent of the Camden City School District in New Jersey, Pedro Naguera, a professor at the Graduate School of Education and Information Studies at the University of California. Los Angeles, Rudolph Crew, who served as Chancellor of what was then the New York City Board of Education from 1995 to 1999 and is now President of Medgar Evers College, and Alberto M. Carvalho, the Superintendent of Miami-Dade Public Schools. In a phone interview, Drive. Naguera said that a couple of people outside the administration had reached out to him in recent weeks to gauge his interest in the job, but he said he had discouraged them because he is happy in Los Angeles. Drive. Naguera added that in following the administration's progress in the schools, I kept wanting a vision and I never heard one, and after a while it became clear that you weren't going to get one neither from her nor the mayor. Mr. Ruhanifard, from Camden, has worked on putting mental health clinics into schools and has cut suspension rates in half by focusing on restorative justice a practice that encourages communicating and problem-solving through conflicts rather than sending children out of the room efforts that echo Mr. de Blasio's priorities. Since he became superintendent, Camden's graduation rate has risen to 70% from 49%. Nonetheless, he would be an unlikely choice for Mr. de Blasio, who has a close relationship with the teachers' union. Mr. Ruhanifard is seen as a reformer who has closed traditional public schools while opening charter schools and so-called renaissance schools which are not unionized and similar to charters but have to admit all children in a given neighborhood. Mr. Ruhanifard said, I love my job here in Camden and wouldn't be interested. Under Mr. de Blasio, the two biggest education gestures have been the expansion of free pre-kindergarten for all children and the Renewal Schools program, 
which flooded low-performing schools with extra support, including social services to address the needs of children living in poverty and an extra hour of class each day. The program is expected to cost $582 million by the end of this school year. While the creation of Pre-K for All, as the mayor calls the program, has been widely deemed a success, renewal has been far more problematic. There have been two independent studies of the program's impact. One, by Mr. Pallas found that renewal schools made no more progress overall than similar schools that were not in the program, while the other found a modest benefit, though its author, Marcus Winters, an associate professor in the School of Education at Boston University and a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, has described it as disappointing given the cost. Mr. Winters said that the very focus on the anecdotal over the statistical that Ms. Farina so valued made judging her effectiveness difficult. One of the things about her legacy that I think has been troubling for me is the movement away from real evaluation of the underlying data to find out whether the many programs that they're implementing have been effective or not, he said. On Thursday, in summing up Ms. Farina's tenure, Mr. de Blasio said, and I can tell you something. I heard this from teachers all over the school system. I heard it from parents. People felt they were in good hands. But if teachers were happy under Ms. Farina, many principals were less enthusiastic. Among the less visible, but consequential, ways that Ms. Farina reversed the Bloomberg administration's approach was to overhaul the system that oversees and supports schools. She disbanded support structures known as networks, which principals opted into and which provided a way for like-minded school leaders to collaborate and share ideas across geographic boundaries. In their place she empowered district superintendents who had lost much of their authority under the Bloomberg administration. The result was a more top-down system, in which many principals said they felt micromanaged and overburdened by paperwork. Many principals also found themselves under investigation over minor compliance issues. Principals charged with turning around schools have seemed to be particularly vulnerable to investigations, because their efforts to push teachers harder or to remove them have angered people. That has, in some cases, complicated efforts to improve the city's most troubled schools.